Hi, welcome back. In this video, we'll be studying about the mathematics behind gradient descent algorithm. Let's get started. So in the previous video, we had an intuition on gradient descent with the help of an example of reaching the bottom of the mountain. So there, we found out about two points. First, that height was a function of two variables, A and B. And what we were interested in finding was the slope, which determined the direction as well as the magnitude of the steps that we needed to take to reach to the mountain okay so mathematically this slope is defined as for example the change in height with respect to change in a variable so if we are interested in finding the slope of height with respect to variable a so mathematically we define it as eva h by eva a so what this means is that we are interested in finding the change in height only with respect to a while keeping b constant similarly the other change in height is with respect to the other variable called b so let's see for example how does this fits in with the gradient descent algorithm okay so in the previous video we talked about using an error function of the form called y minus y hat to the square by 2 so this error function is of the squared form okay why specifically this error function okay so let's first go ahead and draw for example what this cost function or error function might look like so this is a quadratic function okay so a good thing about this function is that this function has a minimum point basically and it's smooth and it converges okay so the rational decision that we take while choosing an error function is that it should be continuous at every point and most importantly it should be differentiable okay in order to be differentiable the function should be smooth and continuous basically not necessarily smooth but continuous since this is e so there exists a value of e for every value of an independent variable okay so here in this case the only variable involved is since e is a function of y hat and y hat in terms is a function of something for simplicity sake let's say for example y hat is a function of a single parameter called theta 1 so ultimately e becomes a function of theta 1 so if you choose some function something as for example like this 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 so what you will find is that finding the slope though is always possible but there is no guarantee that your function will converge or you will reach to the bottom of the mountain so it's a foot most important that uh, it has a, some sort of a convex property so that uh, you might be able to converge okay so let's see for example how we can use these sort of gradients the slope is also called a gradient basically so how we can use this gradient to reach to a minimum of this okay so since e is a function of y hat and y hat is a function of uh, theta 1 we can say that e is ultimately a function might be a g of theta 1 okay so e is a function of theta 1 that is e changes when theta 1 changes okay so what we might be interested in is for example if this is the top of the mountain what we might be interested in finding is what is the change in e when we make a small change in theta 1 so this is what the slope is for example if you are here at any point of time let's say so the slope at this point is given by something like this so this slope is positive that is ever e by ever q1 here is positive okay suppose if you were present at this point okay so in this case the slope would have been negative so ever e by ever theta 1 would have been negative in this case so how we can use this gradient to reach to the bottom so we can use an update equation such as for example let's say if theta 1 is theta 1 minus ever e by ever theta 1 so let's see the usefulness of this equation Suppose we started off with this point where ever e by ever theta 1 or the slope was positive. So if the slope is positive, this quantity is positive, right? And if it's positive, then overall theta 1 decreases. So we'll be moving towards this point or in this direction, in the left direction towards the minima. So what if, if ever e by ever theta 1 was negative? If this was negative, so what would have happened? Suppose in this case, if this was negative, so the negative negative would have become positive. In that case, theta 1 would have increased. So we would have moved in this direction. So no matter where you start, for example, this error function or cost function with the help of these gradients enforces that key you reach to a minimum of the function. Okay. And this update equation is called the gradient descent algorithm. So basically what we're doing is we have an error function. What we're interested in finding is the change in error with respect to a change in the independent variable here theta one in this case. And we can use then this update equation to reach to a minimum of that error function. Okay. For example, if ever e by ever theta 1, for example, is let's say 3. So it tells us that the change in e is 3 times, for example, 3 units and it's a positive change. So this is the direction and this is the magnitude that we were talking about in the previous section. 
so what we can also do is for example we can also increase the magnitude by a factor for example so instead of just eva e by eva theta naught what we can also do is use something a variable called eta which is generally called so this eta is called nothing but a learning rate so basically eva e by eva theta one the magnitude of eva e by eva theta one determines what magnitude of step we need to take for example to reach to the bottom so if it's very large too we'll take a very larger step if it's very small we'll be taking a very smaller step okay so we might want to modulate this step by a factor something called by a learning rate so generally what we use a learning rate is of 0 0.1 in most machine learning applications in deep learning we have various different methods to modulate this learning rate we can dynamically even change the learning rate according to what steps we are currently taking so let's say for example we have a constant rate of 0 0.1 so what we are doing is whatever the change is we are multiplying it or downing it by a factor of 10 so we'll be taking smaller smaller steps you might take a long time to converge but the benefit of using a smaller learning rate is that you don't go astray from the convergent position if this ever e by ever theta one was large what you would have done is you would have jumped to this you would have jumped to this you would have jumped to this this it might be possible that you never converged because of a high learning rate so this is all good uh, when we're talking about a simple function for example such as e and it's dependent on a single variable but what we are more interested in for example how can we use this uh, in case of neural networks so we know that in neural network we still have the same error function that is y minus y hat square by 2 and in this case instead of a simple function y hat is dependent upon many factors for example if you are talking about let's say a single hidden layer network for example if this is the single hidden layer network that we are talking about okay so here it is dependent upon the weight between the input and the hidden layer it's also dependent upon a thing called bias the input at the hidden layer then it's dependent upon uh, the weight between the hidden and the output layer and the bias between the hidden and the output layer so in the previous part where the function was dependent upon just a single factor here a neural network is dependent upon four factors so ultimately our error is a function of these four factors that is weight between input hidden bias between input hidden weight between hidden output and bias between hidden output okay so ultimately if you want to reach to a minimum of this error function or the error value what we are interested in we are interested in is finding these four quantities very much similar to what we did in the previous part change in error with respect to the weight between input hidden change in error with respect to the bias between input and hidden change in error with respect to the weight between hidden and output and the change in error with respect to the bias between hidden and output okay so these are the four quantities what we are interested in so if we have these four quantities with us so what we can do is we can write an update equation very simple similar to the gradient descent update equation we saw for a very simple function so what we can write it as wih is equal to wih minus eva e by eva wih bih equal to bih minus eva e by eva bih and eva who equal to who minus eva e by eva who and sorry this is who and this is bho equal to bho minus eva e by eva bho so if you know these four quantities this is still our gradient descent algorithm if you know these four quantities we can update weights biases accordingly and reach to a minimum of the error function okay so we do this repeatedly until we reach a stopping criteria so generally it is when for example your error is not decreasing so one stopping criteria can be your error is not decreasing upon subsequent upgradation or you have reached the maximum possible number of iterations okay etc so there can be many stopping criteria which you can define of your own so this is basically the gradient descent algorithm for neural networks what we are interested in finding are these values eva e by eva wih eva e by eva bih and these remaining two so once you know these values we can update our equation so now the question comes is how can we calculate these values so this is where a next algorithm called back propagation comes in which is the heart of neural network basically and how do we train neural networks thank you 